Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope uh, you are having a wonderful time up in Serbia. They tour the symposium. So my name is Alayton Piri, and I am from the University of Zambia. I'm going to give a talk titled Empirical Evaluation of ETDMS Compliance for Electronic Thesis and Dissertations, harvested by the Network Digital Library of Thesis and Dissertations Union Catalog. Uh, but before we start, I just wanted to make mention of the fact that uh, if you're interested in the work that I'm going to be uh, presenting, um, you might want to check out our research group website, the Data Lab Research Group at the University of Zambia. Um, you will find uh, details about past projects and, and, and current projects that are aligned with the work that I'm going to be presenting. Um, I also wanted to mention that the research group is actually dedicated to conducting research in three broad areas, so data mining, digital libraries, and technology-enhanced learning. Uh, we're always keen to you know, collaborate with other researchers that are doing uh, the sort of work that we do. <coughs> so the outline of my work is as follows. I'll start with uh, an introduction to provide a bit of context about the work that we did, and then I'll briefly talk about the problem statement and research objectives. I will then describe the methodology that was used to carry out this work. Um, and then I will present uh, the findings and finally I'll conclude and talk about potential future work. So the Network Digital Library of Thesis and Dissertations, the NDOTD, um, uh, is dedicated to uh, promoting the adoption, creation, use, dissemination, and preservation of electronic thesis and dissertations. Um, and it turns out that one of the ways that the NDOTD does this, um, in addition to um, facilitating events such as the symposium that is currently taking place, is they make available um, uh, a software service called the NDOTD Union Catalog, uh, or NDOTD Global Union Catalog. Um, the idea behind this Union Catalog is it acts as a, a global repository of uh, electronic thesis and dissertation metadata harvested from across the globe, right? Um, and the way that the Union Catalog does this is it's implemented with a harvester module that automatically harvests um, electronic thesis and dissertation metadata uh, from, you know, repositories that have been explicitly registered with the Union Catalog. Um, this, this, this is facilitated uh, by making use of the Open Archives Initiative uh, protocol for metadata harvesting, the uh, OIPMH uh, protocol. Um, and really, if if you actually go to the landing page of the Union Catalog, you, you gain a sense of the distribution of, of metadata records that are harvested uh, from these registered sites. Um, so as of August 30, 31st, there were a total of uh, 6,291,782 rec metadata records that had been uh, harvested by the Union Catalog. Um, and really, you, you, you gain a sense of where or which collections or repositories these different records actually come from. Um, if you drill down further and you start analyzing the uh, top level domains, um, uh, associated with these records, you, you gain a sense of the global distribution of these uh, ETD metadata records. Now, just to mention here, if you attended the ProQuest presentation yesterday, you, you, you immediately notice that there's, a, there's a, a, a stark contrast between um, the, the map that was uh, presented in yesterday's talk um, and, and, and what, what we were able to see from the Union Catalog. Um, in essence, I mean, there's a difference between the ProQuest database and the Union Catalog database, but that's besides the point. Anyway, um, another interesting thing about the Union Catalog really is that it, um, it's implemented with a data provider module, um, which makes it possible for services to be implemented um, in such a way that they make use of the data that is harvested by the Union Catalog. Um, so as an example, the NDOTD actually does uh, make, uh, make available yet another service that's referred to as the Global ETD Search Service. Um, so using this search service, uh, end users can actually search and, and browse for ETD metadata records um, using a user-friendly interface. Uh, link of the current slide. Now, it, it turns out that 
because or due to the fact that these records are actually harvested from different sites, um, there's a long-standing issue associated with uh, the quality of ETD metadata records. So in essence, um, the, the, the quality of ETD metadata records uh, that is harvested by the NDOTD has been cited as being poor or otherwise uh, not very comprehensive. Um, and in fact, other researchers such as Suleiman have highlighted um, this long-standing issue by explicitly pointing to the fact that um, uh, there's low adoption um, of internationally accepted standards or prescribed standards associated with ETD metadata, for instance. Um, and, and really, if you, if you drill down further and try and analyze these individual uh, repositories, you begin to see the differences, the disparity that exists when you try and compare the different metadata elements. Um, so just as a simple example here, um, comparing you know, ETD metadata, uh, metadata records from the University of Cape Town repository with the University of Zambia repository, you notice that uh, um, you know, there are metadata elements, for instance, that are not specified in the University of Zambia repository when compared to the UCT repository. Um, and, and really the situation gets uh, somewhat worse if you try and compare the ETD uh, elements that would be specified in these uh, repositories with uh, internationally uh, accepted standards, right? In this case, the ETDMS standard. Um, so just to provide a bit of context, the NDOTD um, developed uh, the ETDMS standard, which uh, is, is, is ideally prescribed, is a prescribed metadata uh, standard that should be associated with ETDs. Um, um, in, in, in simple terms, really, uh, this, this standard um, can easily be mapped onto the more popular Dublin Core um, uh, metadata standard, for instance. Um, so what we set out to do really was to, to try and understand the, the extent um, of uh, metadata compliance to the ETDMS metadata standard. In essence, what we wanted to do was we're interested in, in finding out the, the extent towards which this low adoption of ETDMS was, uh, uh, like when, when, when analyzing metadata records harvested by the union catalog. Um, something else we, we, we set out to do was to try and understand or identify you know, potential root causes for why uh, the metadata associated with the union catalog, for instance, is not very comprehensive. Um, and to do this, uh, we we harvested um, metadata records from the uh, NDOTD union catalog, um, and we did this using the OIPMH protocol, obviously. Um, it, it turns out that um, uh, in as much as there are potentially different metadata prefix that could be used to harvest these records, um, what we discovered was that it was more effective for us to use the OAI DC uh, metadata prefix as the other existing formats yielded um, uh, results that did not correspond to the total number of records harvested by the union catalog. Um, so just giving you um, uh, an overview, of an idea of um, the Dublin Core encoded metadata that uh, uh, were harvested from the union catalog, um, and then find uh, and then what something else we did was we um, we actually conducted a, a case study uh, at uh, a higher education institution, specifically at the University of Zambia, um, and in this case study we we did something similar to what we did with um, uh, the analysis associated with the union catalog, in part because the University of Zambia. Uh, is not officially registered with the union catalog. Um, so what we did, we, we, we conducted a separate empirical analysis of the ETDA uh, metadata records in this repository. Um, we, we also uh, did a document analysis of the uh, institutional repository policy associated with the University of Zambia. Um, and then finally, we conducted interviews with key stakeholders um, that we we identified as being crucial insofar as quality of metadata is concerned. Um, so we conducted interviews with uh, individuals that were involved in you know, devising the policy, the institutional repository policy. Um, and then also we interacted with uh, 
uh, three participants that are responsible for depositing content into the Invest of Zambia repository. Um, again, the idea uh, here was to try and understand uh, the potential source of problems associated with the quality me of metadata. Um, in terms of the results, uh, we harvested a total of uh, 7.5 million metadata records. Um, and and, and these, these metadata records actually came from a diverse set of collections, a total of about 13,954 um, collections. So these 13,954 uh, collections would be these, uh, uh, th these would be these uh, collection names that you see on the Union catalog, like, uh, you know, uh, Western Kentucky University thesis, for instance, or Yale Medical Student MD thesis. Right. Um, um, in order to conduct our analysis, though, we had to uh, perform a series of pre-processing tasks. And after doing this, um, we ended up with a total of about 4.9 million metadata records that were used in the analysis that were conducted. Uh, so the, some of the interesting things associated with the results is if, if you look at, if you try and analyze the, um, the, the records from the perspective of the simple Dublin core metadata elements, you, you begin to see an, an interesting picture associated with the distribution of uh, missing metadata elements. Um, and perhaps uh, uh, things worth mentioning here is the fact that um, um, there are certain important metadata records that would be associated with EDDA, uh, MS that are associated with now entries. Um, and specifically here, we're making reference to elements such as the contributor uh, element, for instance. Um, we, we see here that uh, uh, more than 60% of, um, of, of metadata records did not have um, values associated with the contributor element. Um, a bit of a problem here because typically uh, supervisor advisor details would be associated with the contributor element, for instance. Um, uh, yet another important field that had corresponding missing uh, uh, values here would be the DC, f uh, so the DC publisher rather. Um, uh, very important because you typically have, you typically have uh, details associated with the institution, the faculty or the department that would be specified using this, uh, this element, for instance. Right. Um, uh, another interesting. Um, view associated with the results here is if you look at the you know, distribution of these now entries um, by year, you begin to see that uh, there's a somewhat consistent picture here, right? Um, one, one of the arguments that one could make is that these now entries perhaps would be associated with records that would have been ingested or harvested um, in prior years. But, but in fact, if you look at uh, uh, annual distribution of these you know, now or missing elements, you begin to see that there's a consistent picture year by year. Um, uh, again, drilling down further into these results by, 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 by really trying to link um, the, miss, uh, the, 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 the the specific elements to uh, uh, elements associated with EDDA um, MS metadata, we, we see that uh, for, for elements such as uh, creator, which we expect uh, would be associated with multiple values, <clears throat> especially in instances where you'd want to specify the supervisor, for instance. We see that uh, a large distribution of the non-now, now um, uh, non-now non um, metadata records uh, were actually associated with a single value, right? Um, in essence, what this is telling you is that uh, for the most part, the creator um, element was only used uh, to specify the the author um, or the manuscript, in essence, the student, right? Um, uh, another interesting finding is that, that there appears to be a bit of inconsistencies in the way that um, these elements are used, right? So for instance, if you drill down further to check um, the creator element, you begin to see that um, for some institutions, the creator element is actually used to specify the, the faculties and the, the university names, for instance, in addition to the student name. Um, this goes against, you know, standard practice where the institutional details, right, the institution name, the faculty name, and the departments would have to be specified using the uh, publisher element. 
um, if, if we look at you know uh, the publisher element itself which ideally would, would would have to be used to specify not just the institution but the faculty and the department we again see a situation where the vast majority of non now values um, were actually uh, associated with just a single value right a bit of a problem here because uh, what that signals is the fact that uh, only the institution was being specified, right? So the details of the faculty of the school and the department would not be uh, specified in this case. A bit of a problem because this uh, makes it uh, difficult to implement solutions that would make it possible for somebody to browse content by institution, for instance, um, in, in downstream services that would be implemented, right? Um, and, and again, drilling down on sample records, you begin to see um, that for for records that were associated with uh, multiple values, um, you begin to see that th there's there's some there's, there's some sort of uh, um, accepted practice that is being used here. If you look at the very first records, here, you see that um, uh, not only is the institution being specified, but potentially the faculty and the department as well. Um, and the assumption one would make. Uh, when you look at these results here would be that um, uh, so guess one would say this would be an educated guess for values or for records that were associated with a single value um, only the institution was being specified right so um, in essence we're, what we're saying here is that about 80% of non now entries um, only specified the institution and not the faculty or the department um, the other assumption one would be making is that uh, about about eight percent specified both the institution and 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 the faculty, and then just three percent specified the you know the institution, the faculty, and the department, for instance. Um, again, a bit of a problem here uh, because this compromises searching and browsing. Um, and then finally, um, another multi-value field. Uh, which which one would expect would be used to specify important details like the uh, the the supervisors or advisors uh, associated with the dissertation. We see that uh, <coughs> less than fifty percent of the metadata records actually went so far as to specify the contributor field. Um, again, just giving you an idea of uh, 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 metadata records coming from institutions where. Uh, multiple details of the contributor were were provided. We see here that the supervisor details um, um, were actually provided for you know metadata records that were associated with more than um, one value. Um, just a summary showcasing uh, Dublin core fields that we expect to be associated with multiple values here. Again, the 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 takeaway point here is that the vast majority of these fields would would actually be or are only associated with a single value, right? Um, with the exception of you know contributor and perhaps description. Um, in terms of the case study, um, the the empirical evaluation of um, of of the of, of the repository at the University of Zambia uh, was somewhat consistent with with. Uh, the results that came out of the document analysis and the interviews that were conducted. Um, what we see here is um, uh, a situation where specific metadata elements were clearly or explicitly left out during ingestion of ETDs, right? And specifically here, you notice that uh, uh, elements such as, uh, you know, the DC contributor, DC coverage, DC relation, DC rights, and DC source um, were not specified during ingestion. Um, and then we also notice uh, that there are quite a number of records that don't have uh, the publisher specified uh, in the metadata records, right? Um, and this is consistent to the other studies that we conducted in specific document analysis um, uh, because it turns out that uh, the, the institutional repository policy at the University of Zambia is quite explicit actually in terms of which metadata elements are supposed to be associated with content ingested into the repository. Um, specifically, there are these uh, six uh, metadata elements that are mandatory or are, are, are highlighted as being mandatory fields. Right. 
um, very consistent with the, the empirical evaluation that was conducted. The, the other interesting thing about the IR policies, it does not explicitly state which uh, metadata standards should be used uh, when ingesting generic content into the repository and indeed uh, ETDs as well. Um, um, and it turns out that when interviews were conducted with policymakers, so individuals that were involved in drafting this policy, uh, one of the reasons cited as to why no metadata standard was explicitly stated is that they uh, uh, resolved to use the default uh, metadata standard that is um, uh, used within DSpace, that's Dublin Core, ideally, or the DC terms. Um, so in conclusion, um, what we discovered when, after we conducted this study was that a uh, significant proportion of metadata records in the union catalog are not really compliant with ETDMS standard. Um, this is actually consistent with work that has been conducted by uh, researchers such as Suleiman. Um, <coughs> and, and, and the case study in particular <coughs> points to the fact that uh, you know, policy direction um, and adoption of you know, these recommended metadata standards are crucial in ensuring that the metadata associated with ETDs is, is actually comprehensive. Um, in addition to this, uh, we, we actually see from the case study that uh, awareness happens to be yet another issue that um, is, is correlated to the quality of metadata. Specifically in our case, uh, out of the four policymakers, um, uh, only two of them were aware of the ETDMS uh, metadata standard, and none of the uh, people responsible for submitting um, ETD content to the repository were familiar with the ETDMS standard. In terms of uh, uh, potential future work, um, we are currently busy working towards, and this is specific to um, the UNSA repository and hopefully uh, repositories in Zambia. We're working towards uh, devising techniques to automatically generate um, missing metadata elements um, from, from ETD metadata that has already been deposited into repositories. And the idea, uh, the, 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 the reason we're doing this is we are, um, we're actually working towards setting up a national ETD portal uh, uh, and, and, and would want to ensure that the metadata that is uh, presented from that central repository is actually comprehensive. Um, in terms of potential work, uh, detailed analysis of these metadata re records would have to be uh, conducted with the hopes that perhaps uh, techniques similar to what we're working towards could be leveraged right, to uh, normalize metadata records currently existing in the union catalog. Um, and then, of course, um, perhaps research would be conducted that is aimed towards you know, the development of uh, IR policies and guidelines that are focused towards uh, uh, improving the quality of metadata that would be ingested into higher education institution repositories. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure if there are any specific questions uh, or concerns that people might have. I'm really happy to uh, chat more about this. Uh, some of the uh, literature that was used to prepare the slides are listed. Thank you very much.